Korean war veterans from around the world who fought to defend the South gathered again in this country on the occasion of the seven-decade anniversary of the armistice agreement. Attention is now on North Korea's highly likely military parade tonight. Bigger tax breaks are in store for high-tech companies, cake content creators and families. As the nation's finance ministry heralds some changes in its tax code to revive the economy and encourage growth. The National Assembly today passed a related revision to better prevent flooding on the heels of severe rain damage in Korea. It's July 27, 2023. This is News Center. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yoon Jung-min. On this day exactly 70 years ago, the three-year-long Korean War ended in an armistice agreement. This occasion has brought foreign war veterans who fought to defend the South back to this country for an event in the southern city of Busan, a symbolic place. Our defense correspondent Choi Min-jung covers that emotional moment. Ninety-three-year-old British veteran Colin Thackeray passionately sings the Korean traditional folk song, Arirang. Thackeray is among the 64 Korean War veterans currently in South Korea to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Korean War Armistice Agreement. He was invited to sing the song at the Thank You Banquet in Busan on Wednesday evening, recalling the times he had done with his comrades during the war. The Minister of Patriots and Veterans Affairs also showed appreciation for their sacrifice and contributions to the development of South Korea. The solidarity brought together 16 nations that sent their combat troops, six nations that provided medical support, and 38 nations that sent materials to Korea. These countries gave us the greatest victory and forces that led to the successful post-war reconstruction of our country. U.S.-Korean War veteran William Word said he's been thanked many times, but all the honor should go to the Korean people. When I went home, my home was still standing. My family was complete. But when survival came along, the people of Korea rebuilt their nation, their homes, their cities, their families, and their lives. South Korea also hosted the 2023 Ministerial Summit on Veterans Affairs, which was attended by government delegations from 22 countries who supported South Korea during the Korean War. Luxembourg's Prime Minister Xavier Bettel said no matter how far away Luxembourg is from South Korea, solidarity and support are what matter when fighting for values and democracy. But uh, we know how important it is to fight for democracies, to fight for values has no borders, and you find everywhere partners to fight when it's time to defend democracy. Minister Park proposed a joint declaration to reaffirm the values of freedom defended by the 22 nations 70 years ago, as well as joint efforts toward achieving world peace. South Korea also held bilateral discussions with Australia, France, Luxembourg and Turkey to further solidify the friendships established during the Korean War. Choi min Dong, Arirang News, Busan. In light of the Korean War Armistice Day on this Thursday, President Yoon song yeol and First Lady Kim Gon-hee paid their respects at the United Nations Memorial Cemetery in Korea, located in the southeastern port city of Busan. With him were visiting delegations from UN Force Nations, including Xavier Vettel, the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, and Cindy Kiro, the Governor General of New Zealand. The President and the international guests laid a wreath in front of the UN Forces Monument before observing a moment of silence. This was the first time that a South Korean president visited this monument to pay their respects. The United Nations Memorial Cemetery in Korea is the only UN Memorial Cemetery in the world and is the resting place of more than 2,300 fallen UN Forces members from the Korean War. 
Meanwhile, across the border in the north, Pyongyang is preparing its own celebrations for the day it claims as Victory Day. With delegations from China and Russia present, a large-scale military parade could be part of the celebrations. Our Unification Ministry correspondent Lee Dae-yeon has more. North Korea is expected to hold a military parade on Thursday night, marking the 70th anniversary of the armistice that ended fighting in the Korean War. Pyongyang calls this Victory Day, and the event will likely take place at Kim Il-sung Square in Pyongyang. The exact time is unknown, same too as to whether the North's leader Kim Jong-un will deliver a speech. The North, though, has rehearsed for months for this day as it sees the truce as a victory in what it calls the, quote, Grandfatherland Liberation War. Some observers say Pyongyang will likely unveil intercontinental ballistic missiles, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, and tactical nuclear weapons. North Korea has this week invited delegations from Russia and China. Russia's defense minister Sergei Shoigu earlier accompanied the North Korean leader to a defense exhibition that displayed intercontinental ballistic missiles such as the Hwasong-18 and Hwasong-17. The Korean Central News Agency reported Thursday that Kim and Shoigu talked about the latest weaponry and some of the strategic ways to develop them. Pyongyang and Moscow's defense ministers also held talks which Shoigu assured will be helpful for bilateral military ties. Following this, South Korea's foreign ministry says it hopes that talks came to a peaceful conclusion. As Russia also stands for denuclearization of the Korean peninsula, we hope that the visit can lead to the seizing of provocations from the north and its return to denuclearization talks. A Chinese delegation led by Li Hongzong, China's vice chairperson of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, also arrived in Pyongyang on Wednesday. Li delivered Chinese President Xi Jinping's letter to Kim, who responded with gratitude towards Xi, who prioritizes a close relationship with North Korea. Kim and the delegation members of the two countries attended a celebratory performance on Wednesday, showing off their trilateral alliance and as a response to strengthened ties between South Korea, the U.S., and Japan. Lee Dae-hyun, Arirang News. Some changes were announced today for Korea's tax code for this year to boost the economy through giving more tax incentives. One of the main goals is to raise the global competitiveness of the nation's key industries. Um Ji Young reports. Boosting the competitiveness of South Korean companies on the global stage while also supporting businesses and people's livelihoods. This is what South Korea's latest revision to the tax code published on Thursday mainly aims to do, as well as prepare for the future. This year's tax revision has put emphasis on providing strong support for South Korean firms to better compete in the global market, including those in the Korean content industries and national strategic technology. One of the highlights would be sharply raising tax relief for Korean content makers so that more K-dramas, movies and reality shows can be brought to the world. After the change for expenses spent on content production, the government will grant up to 15 percent of tax credits for conglomerates, 20 percent for strong medium-sized firms, and 30 percent for small and mid-sized companies. The tax code revision also aims to provide higher tax relief for firms investing in the semiconductor industry and other strategic sectors that will drive growth for the country, known as the K-CHIPS Act. Tax credits for conglomerates investing in chip facilities will be up to 25 percent, and small and medium companies will be getting up to 35 percent. Also, there would be greater tax benefits for companies returning to the country from offshore operations by providing them 100 percent of income and corporate tax cuts for the first seven years and 50 percent in the following three years. Another major part would be reducing the tax burden for small and mid-sized family businesses when it comes to inheriting them by putting more companies into the lowest tax bracket of 10 percent. The term for payment will also be dramatically extended from the current five years to 20. With all the changes, the government says the tax code revision will result in a roughly $390 million drop in tax revenue. But the finance minister explained, although it is a difficult time, the tax incentives were allocated to much-needed areas, including prompting corporate investment and child subsidies. 
the government is going to send the bill to the National Assembly by September. Om ji Arirang News. The tax code revisions also seeks to enhance the well-being of the lower and middle classes, as well as future generations through more tax incentives. Her Lee Soo-jin tells us more. South Korea's revision to the tax code this year includes measures aimed at boosting the local economy. The latest tax revision published on Thursday by the finance ministry seeks to expand tax benefits not just for newlyweds but also for the lower and middle classes. We plan to increase support for the lower and middle classes to help the private economy recover quickly and to actively address structural issues such as the population decline. The most highly anticipated tax revision was arguably the tax exemption on funds gifted by parents to their children when they get married. The government has decided to expand the threshold from 39,000 U.S. dollars to around $117,000 for inheritances given by parents to their children two years before or after the date of their marriage registration. In a more direct move to help boost birth rates, the government will also increase payments provided to families from around $620 to around $780 per child. The income limit for families eligible was also raised from around $31,000 to nearly $55,000. In addition, taxpayers can qualify for tax credit rates that amount to 15 percent of medical expenses that exceeded 3 percent of their total income. The tax credit limit of around $5,500, however, will no longer apply to children under the age of six starting next year. It's also not just people that are benefiting. VAT exemptions will be applied to more than 100 types of pet medical expenses starting October this year. The government is also looking to improve people's livelihoods. It will raise income tax deduction rates by 10 percentage points for credit card expenditure between April and December next year at traditional markets and on recreational activities. The 2023 tax reform bill, which will be submitted to the National Assembly in September, is expected to go into effect next year. Lee Soo-jin, Arirang News. Lawmakers in Korea today passed the Rivers Act revision responding to the recent catastrophic flooding and landslides following unusually heavy monsoon rains. This will allow money from the state coffers to be used for flood prevention measures. Kim jong shil reports. I declare that the amendment has been passed. A revision to the Rivers Act intended to support the implementation of anti-flooding measures was passed by the National Assembly with 249 votes in favor out of the 250 lawmakers present. The bill was passed in the plenary session with an overwhelming approval rate regardless of political party. The swift decision came after about two weeks since catastrophic flooding and landslides in central South Korea resulted in 47 deaths and ruined people's livelihoods. The Rivers Act revision has drawn a lot of attention after 14 people died when a river burst its banks due to heavy rain and flooded an underpass in Osong in a matter of minutes. The amendment allows the state to provide financial support for the maintenance of designated regional rivers currently conducted by local governments whose water levels may change due to potential flooding downstream by rivers maintained by the state. Until now, local governments were responsible for the maintenance of regional rivers, and this was not funded by the national government. As a result, local governments experienced budgetary problems in maintaining regional rivers, making it difficult for necessary repairs for the rivers. The parliament also passed revisions to water system management and support for residents near the Kumgang, Nakdonggang, Yongsanggang, Samjinggang rivers. With the revisions, setting the legal framework for water-related disasters such as droughts and floods, these residents can use money from the water system management budget for disaster prevention measures. The revised law will be enacted as soon as the government publishes it in its gazette. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. 
The U.S. Federal Reserve has raised its key rate by 25 basis points, bringing the figure to the highest level in 22 years. It's also creating the largest ever gap with that of South Korea. Moon Hyeryeon explains. With the Fed's latest decision to hike the key interest rate by 25 basis points, the difference in key interest rates between South Korea and the United States has reached an all-time high. The FOMC announced Thursday that it had lifted its interest rate to the 5.25 to 5.5 percent range, bringing the gap between it and the Bank of Korea's rate of 3.5 percent to two percentage points. This is the first time in history that the rate difference between the allies has reached the two percentage point mark, prompting concerns over the impact this could have on the South Korean one U.S. dollar exchange rate and sparking interest in the Korean central bank's response. The one has been losing ground against the greenback, closing below the $1,301 rate at $1,275 on Wednesday as a result of sluggish IT exports and the country logging a trade deficit once again in July. An increase in interest rates by major economies like the United States often leads to a devaluation of other currencies such as the Korean one, as investors are drawn towards more profitable investment prospects. The BOK has kept its benchmark rate at 3.5 percent for nearly half a year now, with its latest decision two weeks ago to maintain the rate for the fifth month in a row. Speaking at a central bank meeting on Thursday, Deputy Chief Lee seung remarked that there is still a long way to go until inflation recovers to 2 percent and that further monetary tightening may be necessary despite the consumer price index slowing to the 2 percent range in June for the first time in 21 months. The central bank had previously announced that rate hikes to 3.75 percent may be possible amid inflation uncertainty, with its inflation forecast for July announced on Wednesday at 3.3 percent. He also said the central bank will closely monitor related market conditions by watching out for increased volatility in domestic and foreign financial markets due to changes in policy expectations. Finance Minister Chu Gong-ho also speaking on Thursday said the government has plans to stabilize the domestic market. The government will continue to strengthen resilience against external factors by bolstering the current account balance and other economic fundamentals, ensuring that South Korea's financial and foreign exchange markets are stable. Moon Hyeryeon, Arirang News. South Korea's total population continued its downward trend for the second consecutive year in 2022, owing to a low fertility rate and a rapidly aging society. According to Statistics Korea on Thursday, the country's total population decreased by 0.1 percent from the previous year, dropping to 51 million. Experts note this seems to be a result of an increased mortality rate due to COVID-19, alongside a continuous drop in the number of new Newborns. In the meantime, the number of foreign nationals residing in the country went up some 6 percent to reach 1.75 million. South Korean tech giant Samsung Electronics has unveiled its fifth-generation Galaxy foldable smartphones that feature bigger cover screens and a slimmer design. This event took place here in Korea for the first time. For more, our business correspondent Shin Hyung joins me in the studio. Welcome, Hyung. Great to be back, Jung Min. So you were at the Galaxy Unpacked yesterday. How was it? Well, Jung Min, it was very grand. So lots of people were there too. So basically, Unpacked was packed. But one thing I like to mention first is the location. Galaxy Unpacked has traveled to multiple cities around the world, including Barcelona, London, and San Francisco. But as you mentioned, this year, for the very first time, it was held in South Korea. And this is Samsung saying that South Korea is the origin of foldable phones. And in Industry insiders also say that the popularity of South Korean culture, including K-pop, was another reason. And in fact, BTS member Suga was there during the Unpacked event. And now let's take a look at the specific changes in the model. Another stride forward has been made by Samsung Electronics in the race to perfect folding smartphones. 
The South Korean tech giant showcased its latest fifth-generation Galaxy foldable smartphones at its annual Unpacked event on Wednesday in Seoul. When technology seamlessly adapts to the world around us, it allows us to be open to new ideas, open for a world of unlimited possibilities. That's exactly what Samsung Galaxy lets us do. This year's Unpacked was all about innovative design and overcoming weaknesses in the previous version. With a larger cover display of 3.4 inches, almost double the size of the previous version, the Galaxy Z Flip 5 allows a variety of functions, including texting, even when it's folded. Users can quickly and effortlessly access more information than before, such as checking the weather, controlling the device's music player, and catching up on the latest global stock market updates. Users can also review, adjust the color tone, or delete images easily with the quick view function on the cover display. When taking a photo of a friend, dual preview allows both the subject and the user to see the image on the cover and main screen simultaneously so they can make adjustments in real time for the perfect shot. The, the new cover screen is really great. It, it improves all the, what we can do with the screen and I need to buy one, to be honest. The biggest change to both the Z Flip 5 and the Z Fold 5 is the new hinge that allows the phones to close completely while minimizing screen creases. The weight of the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is 253 grams, making it the lightest and thinnest design among all the Galaxy Z Fold series released to date. In terms of function, multitasking has been significantly enhanced compared to previous models. Taskbar, which allows a quick switching between applications, has been improved to provide access to up to four recently used apps. Additionally, the two-handed drag-and-drop feature allows users to select an image from the gallery with one hand and easily paste it into Samsung Notes using the other hand, making app and screen switching even more convenient. One expert says the latest devices are expected to help Samsung continue to lead the global foldable market. Competition in the foldable market seems to have intensified as companies like Motorola and Google have also entered the market. However, a company that first entered the market with better technologies would dominate. Samsung is expected to lead the market. Pre-orders for the phone start next Tuesday in South Korea and will be available from August 11. Retail prices start at 999 US dollars for the Galaxy Z Flip 5 and 1799 dollars for the Galaxy Z Fold 5. And Samsung Electronics today unveiled its uh, financial results for the second quarter. How did it perform and what's the outlook down the road? You're right, Jungmin. Due to the sluggish chip industry, the company's operating profit for the second quarter saw an on-year decline of over 95 percent, reporting some 526 million U.S. dollars. And this is the lowest quarterly figure in 14 years. And sales also fell, dropping over 22 percent on-year to 47.2 billion dollars. In the meantime, Samsung's mobile business played a significant role in supporting the overall performance by achieving an operating profit of $3 billion during the same period. And despite the fall in revenue due to a decrease in smartphone shipments, it maintained a strong position amid a sluggish global demand. And Samsung is top in the global smartphone market with a market share of 22 percent, followed by Apple at 21 percent. So with these new models released, it plans to have a stronger presence in the market and improve its performance in the second half of this year. Thanks for the wrap-up, Hyo. Thank you.
Now that the rainy season has ended, South Korea will be affected by the ridge of a strong high pressure system for a while. Scorching hot weather continues with highs surpassing the seasonal average. Seoul will see highs of 33 degrees Celsius. And with high moisture levels in the air, temperatures will be close to 35. Southern regions such as Gyeongju will be baking hot at 36 degrees. A large part of South Korea is under heat wave alerts for the third consecutive day. Advisories have been raised to warnings for more inland regions. Extreme heat can lead to dehydration and fatigue. Children and seniors are urged to use extra caution. As the warm air on the ground is clashing with the cold winds in the upper atmosphere, occasional showers will be produced. Scattered outbreaks of rainfall will be coming and going across the nation. Expect about 5 to 40 millimeters. Morning temperatures will be 1 to 3 degrees higher than today. Seoul will start off at 26 degrees. Most regions will see showers for the daytime. Highs in Seoul will be reaching 33, Daejeon and Chuncheon 34, Daegu will be topping out at 35 degrees. Scattered outbreaks of rainfall will continue for central regions until Saturday. That's all for now and here are the weather conditions around the world. That is News Center for tonight. Thank you for watching. A panel session coming up.